our first YouTube video. Jeez. I'm Lauren. I'm Brooks. And we are the Bashes. <laughs> and we are stoked to share that we are working on a big project. Lauren and I are going to attempt to remove all processed food from our diets for 30 days. What is processed? What is processed? So clearly we have a lot to learn. But before we go any further, it's important that we understand what is the problem with processed. After doing some research, we learned that the technical term of processed foods is pretty broad because even things like cutting and cooking food means it's been processed. So for the sake of this project, we're talking about ultra processed foods. According to the Mayo Clinic, this process includes adding preservatives, flavors, nutrients, and other food additives such as salt, sugars, and fat. Research has linked these ultra processed foods to a higher risk of obesity, heart disease, and cancer. The US food systems have allowed these chemical ingredients to infiltrate our food, and it's gotten out of hand. Just look at these ingredient comparisons of the same food products sold in US versus Europe. It's also important to acknowledge the social issues associated with ultra processed foods. We fully acknowledge our privilege and recognize that not everyone has access to fresh, healthy food. This is a direct byproduct of environmental racism known as the food apartheid, where grocery retailers do not serve these communities and instead fast food restaurants target them. There's an amazing film called They're Trying to Kill Us where you can learn more. And we can't talk about food sovereignty without acknowledging indigenous peoples. Due to genocide and colonization, indigenous peoples were not only stripped from their agricultural practices and traditions, but force-fed processed packaged foods. There's another powerful film on Netflix called Gather that dives deep into this. And lastly, we want to strongly communicate that there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all diet, and we encourage all of you to do your own research and adapt a lifestyle that aligns with your mission and values. So today we're gonna to do three things. First, we're gonna go through our pantry and do a food audit. See what is processed, what isn't processed, and just get a pulse on what we're currently consuming. Then we're gonna to go to the grocery store, and see what we would have bought had we not been doing this challenge. And then we're gonna wrap up the day at the farmer's market, which is just a hub for hyper-local, unprocessed whole foods, and then we'll do our grocery shopping for the week. Let's take a pantry audit. Welcome to our fun size kitchen. Where all the fun happens. <laughs> Tortilla. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Rebo Flavin Folic Acid Water Margarine Blend. Margarine? 4, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 29 ingredients. And it should just be two. Try calcium phosphate, carrageenan, gel and gum, cyanos. Maybe the rule is you can't eat anything you can't bring out. Pea fiber, rice flour, sunflower oil. What's the verdict on oil? I mean, I've heard some like really bad things about oil. Seed Still. oil is supposed to be like the worst. Really? But maybe that's it. We have to be able to see in its original state, thing one. And then have to two. <laughs> we have to be able to say where it came from. Ingredients, organic blue agave nectar, product of Mexico. Does that pass the test? It's definitely extracted from the agave plant. Yeah, I would say probably not. Now the fridge. So here are the here are more tortillas. I mean, yeah. What is proponic acid gum blend? And then made in a facility. I think that's probably the the no go. I put that shit on everything. <laughs> Canola oil, xanthan gum. I think citric acid is just like. We should look at this. I think it's just lemon juice. Gluco, oh, duh, gluco delta lactone. <laughs> I don't think alcohol has nutritional facts. Just sober for the month. Yeah. Cool, cool. The freezer. The freezer. I think a lot of people think being plant based is super healthy, but there's a lot of very, very, very processed foods that come along with it. So this will be good. Water, soy protein concentrate. <laughs> That's fun. Mm. But there are also like a lot of benefits to plant-based foods like this. Like if this gets people from not eating meat, I really don't think it's super problematic. Yeah, I agree. These are my guilty pleasure additives. Maltodextrin, which we need to do our research, what maltodextrin is. Tapioca starch, water, palm oil. Palm oil is the worst of the worst. You want to smell it? Mom, but the orangutan. Oh, no. Nope. She doesn't nope. pass. Doesn't pass. Not a whole lot. Made it through the cracks. That's our yes pile. Here is the no pile. We're putting it in a box because it's not going to expire by the end of 30 days, and we obviously don't want all this food to go to waste. This stuff 
would go bad in 30 days, so we're gonna go donate it to the local access center. Let's go to the grocery store and see what we used to buy. And I have a feeling it's a lot of gum. And just pros. Tasty. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and delicious. We started by looking at the items that we frequently buy. What we don't know is that these have freaking sunflower oil in it. And then some of the foods that we grew up with. Oh my gosh, I used to love this stuff when I was a kid. Palm oil, coconut oil. Damn. But then we got curious and started checking the labels on a bunch of stuff. This is my personal favorite. Oh god. Some of the ingredients list pretty much filled the whole backside of the labels. Oh my gosh. We were shocked to see all of the chemical ingredients in food, especially ones that are fed to children. To be honest, it made us pretty upset to see that food companies can get away with this. Garlic spread. On and on and on and on and on and on. We did find this, however, and although it's packaged, it's very minimally processed. Okay, 100% whole grain, whole wheat, wheat flour, grown on American farms. And employee owned. We love that. So I guess if we were gonna make our own bread, this is what we would use. It must be hard to find organic wheat because there's not a whole lot of options. Hmm. It's so nice out here right now. This is my farmer's market strategy. Buy a lot at a few vendors, especially if you don't have cash because then they charge you a credit card fee sometimes. See, I just walk around and see what looks good, but I definitely pay too much. It gets expensive, but sometimes if you buy more, they give you a discount too, so that's what we're going for. If you're lucky, sometimes they throw in a little something extra for you. It's me. <laughs> and that's why you're married. Gave me an extra broccoli because I was. Sounds cute. They're hard to grow like You know, you just feel good when you shop at a farmer's market. Yeah, because of all the free samples. <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes you think like that's how we. Sh everyone should have that access. Everyone should be shopping like that. And it kind of makes you mad at the food companies who make that not possible. Personally. Yeah. So I think we can all agree that we have our work cut out for us, but we're actually really excited. We want to wrap up by sharing our four goals for this project. One, become super aware of where our food comes from and ideally eat as local as possible. Two, observe how our bodies feel by eating a mostly whole food, plant-based diet. Three, find out if this is even doable. Obviously, it's very countercultural to American capitalism to slow down like this, but we want to understand what it takes. Four, find out the organizations who are shaking up the food system, amplify their work, and share ways that we can all get involved in their movement. We're so grateful that y'all are part of this journey, and we're excited to share everything we've learned. We'll be posting our updates, research, recipes, and more on this channel, so make sure to subscribe. And if you have any tips or recommendations, please share them in the comments. Wow. Boom, baby.